Hello everyone and welcome to the preamble to the ECG course. My name is Sharif Atuki. I am a lecturer of cardiology at Shams University and today I'm going to give you like an introduction regarding what you are going to do and what you are going to cover in this online ECG course. This course starts by the basics of the ECG and going in depth in order to cover like some advanced issues regarding the ECG. First of all, there are certain people whom I want to th thank, of course, because without them, this course will not come to you in this way. The first one is Professor Dr. Mai Hamdi Said, who is the head of cardiology department at Shams University, because her support and encouragement for me in starting these online courses was very important in order to develop the basic cardiology course, heart failure course, and the CCU course, and now we are going to develop this important ECG course. The second one whom I want to thank is Professor Dr. Mirva Tabul Maati, who is Professor of Cardiac Elective Physiology in Shams University, because she is my godmother in Cardiac Elective Physiology, and she gave me the chance, like six years ago, when I was an assistant lecturer, to start recording lectures on this YouTube channel, and it was her idea, of course, from the start. So, without her support, I will not be one responsible for uploading online lectures on this YouTube channel covering many aspects in cardiology. And of course, Professor Hamid Damanhuri, who is a professor of cardiac elective physiology in Shams University, and she is the head of the group at the time being, for her continuous support of online learning and from whom I learned a lot of basics in ECG and bradyarrhythmia per se. Also, I want to thank Professor Dr. Rania Samir, Professor of Cardiac Elective Physiology, and Dr. John Kamel, who is Associate Professor of Cardiac Elective Physiology, because these two persons set the cornerstone of ECG learning lecture as they were the first to start these lectures from which I made a base to start this ECG course, starting from covering ECG lectures for the undergraduate and as well as for the postgraduate. Also, Dr. Lamia Lam, Associate Professor of Cardiac Elective Physiology, and Dr. Ahmed Nabil, Associate Professor of Cardiac Elective Physiology, for setting the cornerstone of ECG learning lectures, of course, because, of course, they helped a lot in developing this base for the ECG lectures. So, without these four persons, of course, these ECG lectures will not come to you in this way. And at last, I want to dedicate this course to the soul of my professor, Dr. Sam Adyab, who passed away two years ago, because by whom I got most of my knowledge in cardiac electric physiology, and I present to you on many of these lectures a lot of animations covering the ECG. It was his idea that he presents these lectures in this way. So without him, of course, I would not, I would not have learned a lot in cardiac electric physiology. So, we are going to now speak about the goal of this ECG course. The goal of the course is to be able to perform an ECG, to be able to interpret and comment on an ECG, to be able to differentiate a normal ECG from an abnormal ECG, and to interpret the abnormal finding in an ECG precisely, which are important for clinical decision. The target audience, of course, of the ECG course, or the first target audience, is a cardiologist covering from resident, assistant lecturers, staff or consultants, anyone who is practicing cardiology, of course, he will get a benefit from this course because it starts from the scratch of the ECG. From basics up to pacemaker ECG uh, as an example of an advanced ECG. But not only cardiologists, because also the target audience can include the internal medicine specialists, resident in specialties who get in contact with ECGs, house officers, nurse specialists and other graduate students. Because every one of them will find the interesting lectures for him that are concerning his practice. Because, as I told you here, that this course covering a lot of aspects regarding ECG and every one of these specialties get in contact with the ECG. So, target audience, not only cardiologists, but all of these are target audience. And, of course, I promise that you will get a benefit from a lot of lectures in this course. Now, we are going to speak about the scheduled lectures in this ECG course. We have like about 20 lectures in this ECG course starting from the scratch and each one of them will cover a certain point regarding the ECG that you will find in books, of course. First one is regarding basics of ECG. It is covering the basics of ECG in regarding like the conductive system with the heart in detail, understanding the normal ECG waveform and intervals, understand the different use of ECG, understand the Eindhoven triangle, because it is the base for understanding ECG is to understand the theory of the Eindhoven triangle, and also to identify the type of ECG leads and the significance of each one, and to know how to connect the ECG on the patient. The second lecture is the ECG interpretation, as here, of course, it is one of the most important lectures in the course because it gives you like a summary about how to interpret 12 lead ECG in a precise and informative way and to learn the rules of normal ECG. We have also number three, the ECG axis. I choose to give a separate lecture for the ECG axis because I know it is one of the different 
issues regarding ECG that is difficult to understand by many, to be understood, I'm sorry, by many of the cardiologists. And so I dedicated a specific lecture for this to understand the value on, of determining the axis of the electrical activity of the heart and to learn the three different methods of identifying the axis of ventricular depolarization. Also, we are going to have a lectures about ectopics in ECG to learn how to recognize ectopics and differentiate atrial from ventricular ectopics and also understand the special types of atrial ectopics and the special types of ventricular ectopics. We have also a lecture regarding the chamber enlargement, of course, to understand how to detect and diagnose right atrial and left atrial enlargement as well as right ventricular and left ventricular hypertrophy in the ECG. We have also a lecture covering the intraventricular conduction disturbance regarding left bundle branch block, right bundle branch block, intraventricular conduction delay, the fascicular block, the bifascicular, and the trifascicular block. I know some of them are easy terminologies or are like famous terminologies for us, and some of them are not very famous for each one of us, and not all of us know how to diagnose these uh, this intraventricular conduction disturbance, so are going to speak about them in this lecture. Also, we are going to have, of course, a lecture regarding the bradyarrhythmia to learn all the types of bradyarrhythmia and how to differentiate them from the ECG and different types of bradyarrhythmia in like a clinically oriented way in order to apply this lecture in our clinical practice. We have also, of course, the corresponding lecture regarding the tachyarrhythmia in which you are going to learn the scheme for classification of tachyarrhythmia and how to differentiate from the ECG the different types of tachyarrhythmia also in a clinically oriented way to apply in our practice. Also, I chose to give a dedicated lecture to the approach to white complex tachycardia because it is one of the very famous clinical situations in our practice to have a patient coming with white complex tachycardia. So we are going to learn how to know the differential diagnosis of white complex tachycardia, how to use the Brugada criteria and the very clear algorithm to differentiate VT from SVT with apparency, and how to make a clinical decision on this patient. Number 10, we are going to have two lectures for the schema change. Part one will cover the skin change related to STEMI, and part two are going to cover the changes related, related to non-ST acute coronary syndrome. So I will dedicate the first lecture for the STEMI, and the second lecture will be dedicated for the non-ST acute coronary syndrome and the chronic coronary syndrome. The 12th lecture is regarding ECG in structural heart disease. I'm going to cover the ECG changes that we are going to see in heart failure, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary hypertension, tamponade, effective endocarditis, in, and also in arrhythmogenic RV cardiomyopathy. We are going to have a lecture about ECG in systemic disease, like for example, electrolyte disorders, hypothermia, digoxin toxicity, and tricyclic antipressants, cerebrovascular accident, amyloidosis, and maternal lupus. We are going to have a lecture regarding ECG syndromes, like for example, wolf parkinson white syndrome, which is very famous for lots of us, J-wave syndromes, long QT syndrome, short QT syndrome, LGL syndrome. We are going to cover the ECG features of each one of them and how to diagnose them. Also, we are going to have a lecture about ECG terminologies regarding some specific terminologies that we commonly use in interpretation like our progression, transition zone, corrected QT, QT dispersion. We are going to understand what is meant by each terminology of them. Also, we are going to have a lecture about ECG variants and it will learn us the different variants of ECG in neonates, the different ECG changes that we are going to see in pregnant women because they are considered like normal variants and some other normal variants that when we see in the ECG, we should consider, consider them as normal variants. Also, we are going to have a lecture about ECG in athletes as we are going to learn the normal ECG patterns in athletes that could, should cause no harm and should raise no clinical suspicion and what are the abnormal ECG patterns that should raise our attention of presence of an underlying cardiovascular disease or antenopathy that may increase risk of sudden cardiac death in this athlete. We are going to have, of course, a specific lecture, and I consider this one of the most difficult lectures for me to prepare, of course, and also for a lot of us in our practice regarding the pacemaker ECG, as we are going to give a resume about the types of pacemaker, roles of pacemaker nomenclature, and how to assess an ECG of a patient with pacemaker. I am dealing with a pacemaker from the ECG point of view. I'm not going to speak about pacemaker programming or something related to the pacemaker implantation itself. No, just covering the surface ECG of a patient having a pacemaker. Number 19, we are going to speak about different ECG maneuvers different from the 12 lead surface ECG, like the posterior leads, the right ECG leads, the lowest ECG leads, and elevating, for example, V1 and V2 to the second intercostal space to diagnose Brugada syndrome. 
And the last lecture is regarding ECG modalities. As we know that we don't only have the resting ECG, we have as well ECG monitoring in hospital, ambulatory ECG monitoring, treadmill ECG, intracardiac ECG from permanent pacemaker, intracardiac ECG during AP study. I'm going to speak in short about each one of them in order to understand the different ECG modalities. So at last of this preamble, my hope to make ECG learning feasible and attainable to each healthcare worker in a practical way, scientific, organized for many years online. So soon we are going to upload these different lectures on the ECG course on the YouTube channel of Cardiology and Shams University. And I hope that every one of us will find like interesting aspects for him in this lecture. Thank you for your learning and for your listening, I'm sorry. And soon we are going to upload this lecture.